Hey guys, I'm just another engineer, and welcome back to some more scrap mechanic. Now, it has been a very long time, and once again, I'm sorry, but that's sort of become my intro at this point to apologize for the amount of time that it's been since the last video, but of course, with all the COVID stuff and school starting up, schedules basically don't exist, so I just recently got reminded that my YouTube channel actually exists, and people are actually finding this stuff useful. So, I decided to, you know, start this back up again, so coming back with some more Turbo Snail, trying to figure out where I actually left off, because I did pre-record this episode over a month ago. Problem was, at the time, it honestly sounded like I was drunk. Um, it was late and I was spacing out, and I could not use that footage because it wouldn't even make any sense to myself, let alone some random person on the internet. So. I have to summarize what happened here. So, I got some basic control logic working right here. Um, oh, right, one, one more thing. Uh, if I pull up this menu and shoot, I click in 3, 2, 1, click. There's a massive audio delay for the game. I have no idea how to fix that. OBS is weird. I'm going to try and update it. I don't know. Some, th something's wrong, so you're just going to have to bear with me on that. Um, but right here we have some basic control logic. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this in the last episode, but this multiplexer is made by Vilgot, a collaborator and friend of mine. Uh, so he spent a very, very long time making this. This isn't even a full thing. If I look up multiplexer right there, this is made by Vilgot. This is about three or four hours of his life. So, I really appreciate him letting me use this thing, because otherwise I would be spending a lot of time on a basic tool like this. Not to say that it isn't very impressive that he did it, it's just I don't want to spend so long on something like this. Uh, RAM, I'm fine with spending a lot of time on that, because that's very... Uh, well, you know, you use RAM quite often. I, I don't know what I'm saying here. RAM is a very core part of this, and it's, you know, well known how RAM works. And I wanted to figure out how to make RAM, because RAM is a little bit more advanced. This is just tedious. Um, yeah, technically these are called demultiplexers, but I just call them multiplexers. Vilgot calls them multiplexers, we'll just leave it at that. So, uh, two multiplexers there, but we'll start over here. Um, so this is the instruction register. Basically, every once in a while this thing is going to call, and it's going to get the next instruction and store it in the instruction register here, and then the rest of the control logic is going to deal with that. So this first half is going to be... Um, I'm not exactly sure it's been so long. I'll properly catch up on this. In future episodes, when I'm actually going to be building stuff right now, I'm just reviewing what I've done. Um, so this half is sort of going to be like what the computer wants to do. So if it's like an add command, you'd put in add right here. And then this would be a secondary part, so this would be like a memory address or something. So this would be telling the thing to add, and then this would do like 14 or something. So it would tell you, I want to take the memory address from... Um, or I want to take the data from memory address 14, bring it into register B, add it to what's in register A, and then save it there. So that's what that would do as an example. Next up, we have the, um, the instruction counter, I'm pretty sure. That's what we call it. Um, so every time it loads up an instruction, it increments so it knows where we are within the system. Uh, so this just increments, and then if we want to do jumps, we can input something here. We can tell it, hey, I actually want to go to another place, and then it'll jump. We can do some fancy conditional jumping with this thing. All well and good. Um, some control logic here, which I'm going to have to look over, because it has been a very long time. It's been over a month since I've dealt with this. Um, and then right here is the step counter, because we sort of have like a step sequencer here, so this is another multiplexer. So if I actually tell this thing to run, I'm pretty sure this should work. So if we get the clock running, you can see the clock runs like that. 
Then we have this that increments up. That's how the multiplexer works, and then this is just being told to increment. And once it gets to the end, it'll increment, and this gets incremented. Uh, actually, I think it should be... Okay, hang on, I'm going to figure this out, I'll wire it up. Okay, I think I'm now caught up with what I did. So, step sequence are here, this thing, um, you know, this will figure out what's going on. So this increments every single time the clock... Um, rises or i think it's falling edge yeah it's falling edge so every time the clock falls this will increment and then we're going to have this go through this multiplexer and go into some other fancy stuff that is combined with this multiplexer which comes out of here so that's already wired up uh from there on so we'll take this we'll combine it with here so this is sort of like a step sequencer well that's what it is so this is going to tell us what step we're in, and then this is going to be telling the computer what instruction it wants to do. So for example, for something like, um, I'll, I'll do add. This thing is first going to take a look at the address, and it's going to tell the, um, the RAM to take the address that's stored in there, and take that and send it to the bus, and it's going to tell the uh, B register to take what's on the bus and save it to there. And so that's going to happen in the first step right here. So when it hits that first step, it's going to take the uh, the memory address that's been stored in the instruction. It's going to send it to RAM. RAM's going to send that to the bus. And then register B is going to save that. And then the next step right here, it would tell the ALU to be like, hey, I want to add A and B together. So it adds A and B together. And then that saves it there. So that's a two-step thing. So it'll do one instruction there, or one bit, one one half of the instruction there, another half of the instruction there. So that means that we only need one ops code to be able to do something that we normally would have needed to do with two. So before, with the uh, useless machine, you would have to tell the thing, load A, load B, add A and B, then save C. The way that this works is it's load A, add B, then save A, because the add B command takes a memory address right here, saves it there, adds it, and then saves it to C, or sorry, saves it to A. So this step sequencer sort of lets us do multiple things with one command, and then after that's done, we'll have an AND gate coming from there, and step sequencer to basically say, hey, I'm done. So then that gets input into this OR gate, and then that will activate through that, that'll increment that, and it will reset this. So it'll increment the task counter, and it will increment the, or it'll reset the step counter. And then we'll also have logic right here that happens every single time for the RAM to load the next instruction into the instruction register. So hopefully that made sense. Sorry, again, I'm not really into it. I haven't recorded in over a month, and I know I've said that already, but seriously, I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> um, so I'll try and record a bit more, I'll try and work around with this stuff off camera, and I'll try and get this to actually start loading in instructions. Um, but let's, first of all, let's just see how quickly we can run this. So I was running this at a clock speed of 10 ticks, but that's falling edge plus rising edge plus some internal circuitry, so it's actually... 26, I think, right, because that's 20 and 22, no, 24, okay, uh, so if we were to do, let's do 5, start this, let's see what happens, all oh, right, hang on, uh, let's stop this, actually reset it, and we'll decrease that time, all right. Let's see what happens here. So that still works perfectly fine. I think increments pretty well. Um, the reason why it's going uh, moderately slowly is because that waits for the rising edge to increment, I'm pretty sure. So I think we can increase it a little bit faster. So if we do two ticks, you know, that's a lot faster. Let's try this. Oh. 
That works. Barely. That's getting activated somehow. So I don't think two works. So if we do three. That's still activating somehow. So let's do four. still activating. We'll see how the uh, thing reacts, but for now, we'll just keep it at 10. That seems like a nice, safe speed, yet it's still fast enough so that things can progress at a decent rate. Uh, yeah. Should be fine. Okay. We'll see. And I'll try and get this thing to read. Actually, I'll do that right now off camera if I can figure it out. Alright, so I've got some things connected up. I have some lamps as an output for this so that we can see what the uh, instruction, or sorry, what the task counter is displaying without actually having to jam on the output because that's going to be important for hooking up stuff like that. Uh, so I've disconnected everything from that output right there. Um, I've connected up the reset button into there. I've got all the buttons connected up, so this is master reset for everything. This is the read, this is the write, addresses, and then the data, so we can put stuff on the bus. Now, we are going to set this up so that it can automatically read things, or uh, sorry, automatically load things into the register. So we'll just take this, tell that to reset, we'll just give ourselves some room just so we can test things out. That's not how it's going to be in the real computer. Just do that temporarily. So we're going to leave this black bit alone, just so that that's sort of like the default. Now what we want is... Um, okay, so we want this gate right here to be... Um, oh, right, okay. So we're going to need gate right here and gate right here. This is going to be going into the feed right there and that's going to take an input from the rising edge monostable and then we're going to paint that lime green i'll explain this afterwards we take this we feed that into um oh wait no shoot that's going into the wrong place Clear that. We need to bring that into the task count or the uh, instruction register. That's an input for the instruction register. This is output right there, and that will output to the address bus, and then this will output to tell. Oh boy, which one is it? Uh. Be behind this pole, and this is going to tell it to write or sorry, read or send to the bus. Okay, what we have going on here, oh, right, and then this needs to be connected up to the clock, just like that. Okay, so what we have going on here is when this black urban now it's black when this black gate gets hit, this is going to get anded with the monostable circuit, so that's only going to fire when the monostable circuit goes off. It's also going to go with this dark green gate, which only goes off when the clock is on the rising edge, sir. Um, the rising edge phase. So I'm actually going to turn this up to like five ticks. So what's going to happen is first, this is going to be on, and so this is going to be telling the um, task counter to output what's here onto the address input for the RAM. So then this is going to tell the RAM, hey, I want the thing that's at this address. So that fetches that, and then it's also telling it to read from that address. So it gets the address, it gets the read command, and that gets output into the bus. And then after that's settled, uh, four ticks later, or something like that, the monostable is going to pulse. And then that is going to go into the read side of this. 
So then that means that the task counter is going to save what's on the bus. So hopefully that means we are going to get some data on this register. So I'm just going to reset all these things and now I'm going to write some things to the memory. So we're going to do this. So each memory address is going to display its address plus one, just so that we know that it's not null. Uh, so now that should be set. Unfortunately, we can't see um, with this type of RAM, but that should be okay. This is set to two seconds. Let's hit go, and there we go. We have the first one. And we didn't get the second one. Oh boy. That's not good. That's not good. Alright, time to debug. Alright, so I think I found the problem. We hit go. We can see this. It'll flash the incorrect one and then goes to the correct one. So the problem is the address is getting there too early. Or at least the write command, or the read command is getting there too late. Or this, yeah, okay, so it's this that's getting there too early. So the signal is not getting there uh, quick enough, or that signal is not getting here quick enough, or this signal is getting sent too quickly. So we can't speed that up, so we can delay this. So what we're going to do, we're going to disconnect that. Going to put it into here. And now we do the tedious task of slowly incrementing this counter until it works. So I'm going to do that, and you're going to see the results in half a second. And as it turns out, just no delay actually works. So the internal delay of this thing is enough. So all we needed was a one tick delay on that. Alright, so now that works, and this increments. Oh my gosh, why was that so easy? I don't get it. Expected a lot more hair pulling. Um, yeah, that works. Um, there is a little bit of an issue here, though. Um, and I guess I'll sort of deal with that in the next episode, but this is sort of out of sync. So you saw that this address got sent, or the address got sent there, but it didn't process in time, and it read, and it output the wrong thing to the bus. So I'm going to set up the control word in the next episode. For now, I thought this was going to be a short check-in, but apparently it's not. So I'll wrap this up here. Um, next episode, I'm doing the control word, hopefully. Uh, so that is this done, or I, I did that a month ago, I literally changed nothing except for one little timer and some logic gates there, but I hope you enjoyed this, uh, again, so sorry for not being as active as I could be, I'll try and get another video up as soon as possible, but of course my promise means nothing when it comes to that, so I'll see you guys when I do, and hopefully it's soon, goodbye.